Cook City Silvergate literally borders the northeast entrance to Yellowstone. Driving through this entrance puts us in the famed Lamar Valley. Lamar Valley is one of the best places to see wildlife in the lower 48 states. As such, it has been referred to as the American Serengeti. This morning, we're waking up at 4.30 in the morning to go wolf watching. But in Yellowstone, bison gems like this are common. Most visitors call these animals buffalo, but as every word Nazi on YouTube will point out, they are named bison. Their Latin name is actually bison bison, but they've been called buffalo since the fur trapper days and it's also an acceptable term. Please, life's too short to argue about things like this. In 1903, Teddy Roosevelt visited Yellowstone while he was President of the United States. When he visited, there were only about 25 bison in the entire park. America nearly killed off the bison, but by about 1900, it was trying to save the species. One man named Charles Buffalo Jones earned his buffalo nickname by being a buffalo hunter, but to his credit, he then turned to saving the bison before it was too late. Teddy appointed him to save the Yellowstone herd, they gathered all the remaining bison and put them in a fenced area in Lamar Valley. The Lamar Buffalo Ranch operated as a breeding zoo for many years and has been called the birthplace of wildlife conservation. This species survived and there are now about 4,000 bison in Yellowstone. In fact, the park is at carrying capacity. Bison numbers continue to increase, but the park has to remove about 500 to 1,000 bison per year through culling or adoption. Today, the Buffalo Ranch is operated by the nonprofit partner Yellowstone Forever. There isn't a buffalo zoo anymore, but you can book multi day field seminars here and stay in the ranch. Unfortunately, some today think the entire park is a zoo. We even did a whole video about dumb Yellowstone behavior. As one park official said, bison are pretty chill until they're not. I found this out last year when I saw a bison herd near me and one charged me. <laughs> Let this serve as a warning to keep your distance. We've arrived at the popular wolf watching spot, Slough Creek. Slough Creek is a campground as well as the home of the Junction Butte Wolf Pack. At the same time the park was trying to save the bison while Teddy visited in 1903, it was trying to eliminate wolves. Wildlife management was a young discipline back then and the prevailing thought was that predators were bad. As a result, wolves were hunted out of Yellowstone and most of the West by the 1930s. Wildlife management evolved over time and biologists realized that natural predators were good for an ecosystem because they kept the grazers in check. Without natural predators, the elk numbers skyrocketed and they overgrazed Yellowstone. So in 1995, Yellowstone embarked on a daring project to bring back the wolves. The initial batch of wolves was imported from Canada and released right here in Lamar Valley. Imagine living near the park, which doesn't have fences, in a place such as Cook City Silvergate. Would you want a wolf roaming around your neighborhood? About 25 years later, biologists believe wolves have restored the balance to the ecosystem by reducing the elk numbers. However, the decision still has its enemies. Locals complain the wolves are a different, larger breed than what existed before and that they're killing machines, leaving fewer elk for them to hunt, and preying on livestock nearby. As a consolation prize, Montana and Wyoming have legalized wolf hunting, much to the dismay of people called wolf watchers. Wolf watchers come to Lamar Valley from all over the world because it's one of the best places to see them from the road. They get attached to these wolves, so much so that they know the wolf packs and their movements. They even give them names such as Spitfire. These wolves are tracked by the park using collars and by wolf watchers on websites. Entire books and documentaries have been dedicated to individual wolves. If you want a wolf watch, winter is the best time. In the summer, you may get lucky and see one up close, but generally, you'll need a scope. Binoculars just won't do. You can rent a scope from the general store in Cook City if you can't buy one. If you're interested in finding wildlife at Yellowstone, check out the links in the description. You can book wildlife tours and learn more about the animals, or you can download my much more affordable game plan and audio tour. 
there's more to do in Lamar Valley. Trout Lake is a short hike that's steep at first, but then levels out. A short walk around the lake provides views of streams, birds, and wildflowers. Park and take the short walk down to Lamar River to hear more of the sounds of nature. Every trip to Yellowstone is a new and different experience. You just never know what incredible things you'll see. This time, I saw park officials carting off an injured or dead bison. I'm assuming it was to protect the wolves and other animals who would soon come for a grand feast. And of course, everyone wants to see a bear. Unlike in the old days when people could feed the bears in Yellowstone, there's no guarantee you'll see a bear if you visit. But if you do see one, you can be sure there will be a crowd. If you do see one, consider yourself fortunate, especially if you're lucky enough to have it cross the road like happened to us in 2006. <laughs> This is a clip from a longer video I created about Northern Yellowstone. Click the video image on your screen to watch that one next. Mm -hmm. 